Okay, YouTubers, this is The Angry Prepper. Today's episode is going to be the first episode in the Bug Out series. We're going to start out with Bug Out bags. Now, through this video, you're gonna see uh, three different sizes, and I'm gonna explain that a little later on the three different sizes and why you might uh, wanna entertain all three of them or one of the three. It's entirely up to you. So, Bug Out bags. This is, Bug Out bags are equipment that go into a bag that helps you bug out right so if you are in your home in your home let's start on a lower scale catches fire and you need to get out of there you can grab your bug out bag you can grab your bug out bag and go right um, normally people have their bug out bags by an exit you don't want to put your bug out bag in a closet so if you have to get out of dodge the last place you want it is in the closet and I'll explain that a little later. So, again, bug out bags are gear that you would need to bug out of a situation. A bug out bag is gonna sustain you depending on the amount of content you have in your bag. Food, water, and shelter. Uh, normally, you're going to measure your food, water, and shelter uh, for the amount of time you need it for. So hopefully, if you're bugging out, you have a point B or C to get to. You don't wanna be roaming around like uh, The Road, right, the movie The Road. Your bug out bag is your first line of defense and also your last. So when building a bug out bag, you should keep that in mind. Why should you have a bug out bag? Well, most people seem to think, and this is a, a, a new thing now, this anti bug out movement. Oh, I'm not leaving. I'm staying in my place. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to fortify and then that's it. All right. What if you have a fire? What if you have a fire and you have to leave? What if there's an earthquake and it levels your home, right? Now, obviously you have an earthquake and it levels your home, you're not going to leave your land, but nonetheless, it's good to have a bug out bag that you can grab and take outside with you. Pitch a tent and then figure out what you're gonna do from there. If you have a fire, the same thing, you might not leave your land, but you definitely wanna get out of that, that hostile environment, if you will. Take your bag and set up your shelter and then plan what you're gonna do after that. A bug out bag is always needed. This anti bug out bag movement, I don't know where it came from, but it's not realistic because there are other things that can happen that's going to uh, make you bug out, if you will. Your bug out bag is an insurance policy, guys. It's an added insurance policy. You prep for emergencies in your home, that's added insurance to make sure that you and your family uh, survive. A bug out bag is the same thing. It's going to allow you to survive once you leave your home. Once you leave the area you're in, what if you have to leave the area altogether because of something like a gas leak? You want your bug out bag to sustain you while you are on the road and getting away from that danger, that dangerous environment. So a bug out bag is again, an insurance policy that's going to add days to your, uh, your life, if you will. The history of a bug out bag is survival gear that's to sustain you for three days. So the history of the bug out bag goes from what I can gather online was in the Air Force and in, I guess, helicopter crews, which is a part of the Air Force, they have bug out gear in case they crash, right? Things like a crash kit or something that they also, it's also known as. And that allowed them, that gear allowed them, once they were in hostile territory, to get out of that territory. So they grabbed these bags or, what, or the kit, wherever it was stored, whether it was under the seat of uh, their, their aircraft or in the tail, in helicopters, some, uh, sorry, some cases in the helicopter uh, tail. Once they crashed, if they can find that tail or get underneath their seat, they would grab these bug out bags. They were also stored in various parts of aircrafts. I don't know where all of them were, are or were, but they were just geared that allowed them to get out of hostile environments. So again, bug out bags have come in handy for those who have crashed. So what are in bug out bags are normally, but not always, food, water, emergency shelters, ammo, firearms, and toiletries. And then some people carry cash, uh, information, with phone numbers and things like that, that's also put in bug out bags, at least copies of those, right? Copies of your license and IDs and things like that are stored in your bug out bag. So these are uh, normally what you will find, but not all the time. So now, I started years ago 
for myself a new protocol for bug out bags. So bug out bags are normally three day supplies inside your bag. And the three day supply guys is food and water. That's where a lot of your weight's gonna come from. It's actually gonna come from the water and possibly the food you carry, but more likely than not water. Uh, we're gonna get into that in a little bit about water that is. The protocol that I changed from three days, I changed it to five and I changed that for myself after looking at various situations that happened, and it actually started with Katrina. Looking at Katrina and looking at the amount of days people went without help, it far surpassed three days. In some cases, it surpassed five days. Now, can you carry five days of water? No, you absolutely can't. But you can definitely carry five to 10 days worth of food, especially if you put freeze-dried food in your bag. So with water, you are absolutely going to have to map out where you can collect water along your travels. All right, guys, so let's get into the bags themselves. Now, I like personally, my personal opinion, and uh, I favor compartmentalized bags more than I do dump sacks. Now, compartmentalized bags are bags that have multiple compartments or pockets. Uh, Evola stock bags, Max Petition bags, these bags are compartmentalized, meaning you can put certain items where you want and you know exactly what pocket is in. Versus a dump sack, which looks like this, these are like Jansport book bags. These are bags where you just dump all your items in. Now there's a solution to dump sacks. With dump sacks, you can actually uh, compartmentalize on your own by using uh, freezer bags, right? Ziploc freezer bags. Uh, preferably gallon sized or quart size and you can put items smaller items especially in that and you can compartmentalize on your own that way but when it comes to sleep systems that's where the dump sacks uh, tend to fall off because they're not uh, they're just not big enough to put items in now there are some bigger dump bags like snow sold by snug pack they have a they have a couple of bags where they're just like, they're probably like the size of this and it's just all one compartment and then you can put as much shit as you want in it. There is that. The problem with dump sacks versus compartmental bags is that with a compartmentalized bag, I can go into whatever pocket I want and pull out the item I need versus a dump sack, I have to keep in mind or be mindful where these items are and possibly dig through the bag. When you're bugging out, you wanna minimize your stops with the exception of sleeping at night. So that's the one downside to dump sacks. The upside to dump sacks is that some of them are small and they force you to put exactly what you need in a bag versus everything you want in your bag. So a bigger bag obviously presents a problem because you feel like once you're done packing what you need or the list you want by, you like to put more shit inside. You don't wanna do that. Now, the one thing about a lot of the bags I buy, they are waterproof or water resistant. Most dumps bags, again, like Jansports and book bags and things of that nature, they're not, but you can absolutely line them with a garbage bag, right? So if you have like a Jansport bag, you'll take a small garbage bag, you know, like those little uh, bucket pail bags. You'll put that inside and you'll line it, you'll line your gear to make sure it stays dry. That's one way to keep your shit dry. Uh, the other way to keep your shit dry is you can also, which is a lot, you can also put it in a um, contractor bag and cut slots out for the shoulder straps. So now that your bag is covered with a contractor bag, which is a thicker garbage bag, guys, that, those things are clutch. They are absolutely uh, one of the best bags to have in your bug out bags or covering your bug out bags or contractor bags. Now, when you cover your bag with a contractor bag, make sure the opening of that bag is at the bottom. So when it rains, the rain beads off. Now, obviously with the holes from your straps coming through, some water's gonna get in, but your bag's not gonna get soaked. The upside to compartmentalized bags is that you can keep items together. For example, toiletries in one spot, sleep gear in another spot, food and water in another spot, communications, here, ammo and weaponry, if you will, there, right? So, and, and the other thing about compartmentalized bags is a lot of them are uh, military spec. They are not military bags, but they're built to military specs. So, for example, this has molly webbing on the front. 
Molly webbing on the front, Molly webbing on the side will allow you to attach other pouches to it to make the bag built to you, built to your, your favor, if you will. So that's what the good thing about these military-esque bags is that the Molly webbing allows you to add uh, pouches, if you will, if you need. Now, I am not a big fan of building my bag out like that. We're adding more um, pouches because it makes it bulkier. There's a reason why you don't want to go with bulkier bags because if you have to slide through something, if you have to carry it over something, sometimes the bulkiness can throw the weight off, which the stuff in your bag is already doing a good job throwing the weight off, but bulkier items tend to do that and they tend to snag on shit when you're going uh, you know, through trees and in the forest and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you're adding a pouch. Try to make sure the pouch is not somewhere where it's going to get snagged. That's why most people, most people will put the pouches like here versus here on the side. Or even on some cases with a molly webbing here on the top, you'll put the pouch, uh, attach the pouch to the top. So it's directly in line with your body. So when you are looking for a bug out bag, whether it's compartmentalized, whether it's a dump sack, whether it's a camping bag, right? Camping bags are uh, pretty much like dump sacks. They have few compartments and I use all my bags are, are military bags and they're camping bags and they make for great camping bags. We'll get into that a little later. But when you're looking for a bag, you want it to be waterproof, durable, comfortable. More than anything else, guys, it has to be comfortable. You have to fit each bag for you, right? Not all bags fit everyone the same, right? Women have to uh, meet certain specs. The women's bags, sorry, have to meet certain specs for certain women, right? Some women are big chested, some women are small chested, some women got bigger hips. So some women are just bigger than other women, right? Some women will fit. Uh, one of these bags, these man bags, if you will, right? So you have to figure out which bag is for you. You have to test them out. You have to go to a camping store, preferably for those camping bags, and fit the bag and see if it fits you. Men, you too. You go to a tactical store, a military store, see if they sell, for example, Ebola stock or Max Tradition, go to the store, uh, make sure you carry like a five pound uh, weight or something so that you can put it in the bag so you get a better feel. Because an empty bag, guys, feels awesome on your back. Once the bag has weight in it, it changes. So you definitely need a five pound plate or a barbell, if not a barbell, sorry, a dumbbell, if you will, to put in the bag. So now you, you get a better feel of what this bag, uh, how this bag fits your back, sorry, with weight inside. With weight, without it, without weight in the bag, guys, like this bag, you know, felt awesome. Once I put weight in this bag, it changed a little bit, you know, it changed a little bit, but then I was able to adapt to it. But you don't want to adapt to a bag that you get because you, you put it on empty, you put all this shit in it, and then you put it on again and you go, oh, okay, it's fine. And then you don't walk. Now you're like, shit, you know, this doesn't feel good. Now you got to deal with this uncomfortable bag for a long distance. The bag needs to be dependable. It needs to be affordable. Affordable is, that's entirely up to you. It's what you can afford, obviously, right? So if you can't afford a $300, you know, backpack, don't get it. It's that simple. Go for something cheaper. Go for something in the $60, $80 range, $100. Know what your budget is before buying the bag and set the budget. Don't go blindly and look at a bag, fall in love with it, and then find out it's like, you know, $250. bucks. you are like, shit. Set a, set a budget for yourself, and that's the bag you go for. Now, keep in mind, guys, you do pay for what you get. So with that, paying for what you get, in a lot of cases, not always, but in a lot of cases, you pay cheap, you get cheap. You pay uh, big, you get better. Especially in military gear, I found out. I found that the more I paid for this uh, military style bags, the better the bag was. Right? And I tested these two bags in front of me, the half track. I tested the half track and the Ebola stock for years now. This bag is, is older than this bag and these bags held up for years. Taking them on bug out trips, uh, bug out bag weekends, they held up. So again, I've had cheaper bags and they fell apart. And they fell apart at an event for a day. So again, keep that in mind when you're buying a bag. If you're going to buy cheap, make sure you read the reviews of those cheap bags. So some cheap bags uh, or cheaper costing bag, I think one's called 3V, they're an affordable bag and their bags are tough. So I would probably go with that company before um, if you can't afford an expensive bag, you can go with 3V and check out what they have. Maxpedition, they have sales. They have a lot of sales. 
So frequent their website and look for a bag that's affordable for you that's also uh, dependable. Personally, multiple compartments, pockets, and pouches are great. Uh, make sure it has a waist strap, guys. A waist strap is important. That's gonna take the load off your shoulders. Make sure it also has a sternum strap because it takes the, the, the strap that starts to eat into your shoulders here. You pull it together and it takes that weight off and now it's centered where it needs to be. Uh, waist strap and a sternum strap are a must, especially if you're walking long distance. We watch those movies where they don't have the, they don't have the uh, sternum strap on and they don't have the waist strap on and they're walking 60 miles. No, it's not gonna work out, especially if you have 20% of your body weight in the bag. After a while, it's gonna eat into your shoulders. So you put the waist strap on, it takes that, that uh, pressure and weight off your shoulders and you feel a hell of a lot better. Especially if you don't have a waist strap and you have a heavy backpack, it starts to eat in your neck. Right? It starts to pull on your shoulders, which pulls on your neck muscle. That's over a certain period of time. Like I said, portable is, is best. And some bags, when I mean portable, I mean it's, it's, it fits your bag correctly and allows you to walk. It allows you your natural gait of walking. Some bags, I've seen guys have too big of a bag and it throws their gait off. So now they're like sort of limping because it's too heavy. right? And it has to be comfortable. I said that before, I'll say it again. Comfortable is key. Comfortable is going to allow you to walk longer. An uncomfortable bag is going to make you stop multiple times throughout that trip. It's going to slow you from getting uh, to getting to point B. So keep that in mind. All right, guys. So this is going to be the end of part one of bug out bags. I do not want to make this video too long. So I'm stopping at the roughly 20 minute mark. And please stay tuned for part two coming out tomorrow. All right, guys, so this is The Angry Prepper. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on The Angry Truth channel, the more political-based, debatable, uh, or debating channel, if you will. And uh, it's a current event channel as well. All right, so thank you for watching.